Born too late to venture out into a world unknown, born too early to venture out into the unknown cosmos. Yet here we are in this interesting intermediate stage, laying out the framework for what we as a species will become, as we reach the climax to the most important stage in human history. But it will only work out once humanity makes it over its biggest hurdle yet, and potentially ever, itself. Humanity is our next frontier. We are all living in an era that has come into existence due to an astronomical amount of events, with probabilities so low, it's hard to fathom. But nonetheless, there were events that created our universe, that created our solar system, that allowed organisms to develop out of the chemistry on Earth's surface, to eventually having biology form sophisticated levels of intelligence, and having said intelligence think, interact, create, forming not only our biological identity, but our cultural one as well. Culture, for the most part, is a result of our human senses and desires being influenced by geography and directed by individuals. Clothing, art, cuisine, music, literature, architecture, activities, you name it. And being that we are all of the same species, we have the capability to share our own regional variations of these with one another, and boy have we done just that. And as a response to all of that, we have created technologies, trade systems, and governments. And as communities desire information, resources, or even labor from a given part of the world, we have shaped our technology, trade systems, and governments to make that possible and often more efficient. The aftermath of all of this advancement and efficiency has pulled the world together, making it a much more intertwined and connected place. Essentially globalizing many different aspects of the human experience and even influencing the movement of people themselves. The demands of the majority and most influential people have forced all of humanity to be involved with the different people from around the world. So much so that it's almost impossible for us to ignore one another anymore without difficulties or negative consequences. And this is in part thanks to the advent of globalization, which has been rapidly accelerating over the past 500 years, and especially the past 20, with the widespread introduction of the internet. Though one could argue it's been happening since the dawn of human civilization itself. We've come a long way, and quite honestly, it's both amazing and scary. But now more than ever are we dealing with the problems of globalization at a scale never seen before in human history. And our individual civilizations, cultures, and problems are being pulled together, creating a human civilization, a massive greater human culture, and making regional problems humanity's problems. And we see two opposing trends, those pushing for its success, and those fighting against it. Some would call it a clash of civilizations, but I would argue it's something bigger than that. Something much more complex. For what it truly appears to be is a transition. A transition from a type 0 civilization into a type 1 civilization. And you either make it, or you break it. Whew, okay, hold up. That's neat and all and a little melodramatic, but so what? Space is humanity's next frontier, not humanity itself. That doesn't make much sense, right? Here's the thing. We are currently what is known as a Type Zero civilization. This coming from a scale developed by Russian astrophysicist Nikolai Kardashev, being the Kardashev scale. The concept behind this scale has gone on to be a model for more encompassing and recent scales, with the initial intent of being used for evaluating extraterrestrial civilizations that we could see in space, by means of evaluating their energy consumption capabilities. Partly because that is something we can see from a distance, and because it would imply a certain level of technological achievement. To break it down, a Type 0 civilization is a civilization with a rather stratified populace and obtains most of its energy through secondhand means, like oil and coal equivalents, being exactly what you see on Earth right now. Type 1 civilizations are planetary and have a means to gather all the energy on the surface of their planet through means of highly efficient green energies. They also have the ability to control aspects of nature, like hurricanes and volcanoes and such. It also has a much more homogeneous population, and Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers would be good fictional examples of Type 1 civilizations. A Type 2 civilization would be stellar and have the capability to collect all the energy from its star. A good fictional example being Star Trek. A Type 3 civilization would be galactic and have the ability to gather energy from multiple stars, pretty much being able to harness power from an entire galaxy. There has even been proposals for Type 4 and 5 civilizations, with a Type 4 civilization being universal, and a Type 5 being multi-dimensional, but I'm not gonna get into that because it's really pushing the limit. 
I want to focus on current trends and implications of Earth transitioning from a Type 0 civilization to a Type 1 civilization. And this is where the discussion gets both interesting and extremely important. Within the past 100 years, we have seen some of the key aspects of a Type 1 civilization start to take shape. The most prominent being the rise of a Type 1 language and a Type 1 communication system being English and the internet respectively. I mean, the fact that I'm making this video in English in the middle of nowhere Maine for a global audience speaks tremendously about the legitimacy of all this. And the growth of these world communication systems that heavily complement each other, in light of a sophisticated global trade network, we have seen the rise of a Type 1 culture. I mean, what we call internet culture is truly the birth of a complex world culture that is extremely diverse and gargantuan. But what needs to be understood is, once you get the globe rolling with the establishment of Type 1 components, you set the stage for almost all of the other ones to be almost inevitable. Theoretical physicist Professor Michio Kaku has placed a tremendous amount of time evaluating trends with his and current models of this transition, with multiple publications to show for it. He discusses entities like the European Union being an early attempt at a Type 1 economy, all the way to things like association football, soccer, being Type 1 sports. Globalization and engagement of systems and culture all around the world contributing to this Type 1 civilization. Professor Michio Kaku has estimated that we will make the full transition within or around the next 100 years. But only if we make it through it. Yes, there are many trends that are pushing us towards this Type 1 civilization status, but also many that are pushing us away from it, ones that are quite dangerous. A push away from a Type 1 civilization is often a push against multiculturalism, secularism, human rights, and science in many respects often in an attempt to establish a fabricated legitimacy. A current prime example being ISIS, using terrorism in order to try to forcefully establish a type of theocracy known as a caliphate. But they have only been conditioned into existence due to the very problems that are pulling us apart. Some examples being the intentional destabilization of a region and providing weapons and resources to often dangerous and inconsiderate people. But on a bigger scale, you got problems like illegally annexing territory, internet censorship and restriction of freedom of speech, abuse of human rights and limited access to education, justifying theocracies, oppressing people of a specific sex, gender, sexual orientation, religion, or lack of religion, placing the interests of business and money over the well-being of people, and war. And I'm positive you can think of a number of countries causing these problems, whether it be the United States, China, Russia, North Korea, Israel, Saudi Arabia, you name it. Probably every single country is doing at least one. And it's because of this stuff, things in the eyes of many do not look good for humanity's future. And I think it's completely understandable why there would be pessimists and conspiracy theorists considering the lack of transparency, the lack of consideration, and the overall shadiness that does go around on the global theater. It's awkward, yes, especially with the intense nationalism and individuals who love propagating stuff. But, the reason why I have hope, and I believe we can make it through this, is because the first aspects of our human society to reach Type 1 status were not authoritarian governments, were not power-hungry businesses, or uncompromising religious or ideological groups. It was our communication. English and the internet give me hope that before we leave our solar system, we can direct the human civilization with information sharing and discussion to push for a world that will give us all the ability to have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Part of me likes to think it's not just wishful thinking because we're discussing it right now. What we gotta do first is recognize our problems and evaluate what we gotta do. I mean, it's estimated that we will have a population on Earth of about 9 billion people by 2050, with India and Nigeria accounting for about 800 million people alone. Even countries like Afghanistan are expected to double in population by then. We have about 80 million people being born annually. And to top it all off, we gotta figure out what we're gonna do with all these people, especially in light of the next big technological boom is expected to involve advanced robotics and artificial intelligence systems that are going to eliminate many low-skilled jobs. CGP Grey discussed this in great detail in his video, Humans Need Not Apply, which I strongly recommend you watch if you haven't already, and heck, watch it again if you have, it's definitely worth it. 
Problems like that, coupled with things like climate change, famine, extreme poverty, and horrible leadership are going to cause a lot of problems in the future unless we start planning ahead big time. This transition into a type 1 civilization is becoming extremely relevant, and many people don't have a construct to attach that to, but hopefully it's something we can all latch on while we try to figure out what's going on. What is best for humanity is what the global discussion needs to be about, and luckily we're seeing it more and more, but it's also causing many stressors around the world. There are so many things to consider, and it's difficult for many of us to wrap our mind around all of it. Finding ways to ensure that people have access to the resources they need is easier said than done, but people are definitely tackling it all around the world from different angles. Something I would argue is one of the most important things is for us to invest money and time into education, especially in countries that are going to have the largest population growth in the next few decades. To provide an education that introduces people to concepts like personal financing, sex education, potentially computers and coding, English, and learning about the historical context of people around the world. To better understand each other. I understand it's going to be difficult, and many people are going to resent it, but we have to help as many people as we can. If we don't get involved in trying to improve the conditions of our human civilization, and have compassion and consideration for as many of us as possible, we will jeopardize everything. Okay, I understand this is getting a bit preachy, and trust me, I could go on all day about this, because it is so important, especially from an anthropological standpoint. This is the most important stage in human history, and it stinks having to be the stepping stone that figures out all the problems that have been building up over the past few hundred years. But it's a race against the clock, and it is not slowing down for us to figure it out. Humanity is our next frontier. As a final note, I would like to leave you with this quote. Education is learning what you didn't even know you didn't know. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the video, finally. My question for you guys is, what element of society do you personally feel is most important to tackle? And with all that said and done, my name's Dale, this is Think Fact, and remember, never stop learning and thinking. Thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like. It would really help me out. And feel free to check out some of my other content over the facts and thoughts that almost everybody missed. Have a good one.